Okay, so I had public schools and bullying and the issues and the solutions. A quick summary of that is bullying is a very prevalent and important topic within elementary schools to this day. This article reports that bullies make up 15% of a school's population, and the fact is kids repeat actions they see from adults. So when an adult like a teacher doesn't intervene, kids believe their actions and behaviors are okay and will continue to act. Bullying has many forms, such as cyber, physical, and verbal. Each of these are different, but no lesser cruel than the other. As teachers, we can stop the bullying and help raise awareness for positive conflict resolution and strategies to combat bullying. So the first key point from my discussion was to help prevent bullying in your classroom. The teacher needs to address it at the beginning of the year, specifically making a point that it will not be tolerated and they should address it throughout the year with the guidance counselor and do a few lessons here and there just to keep it relevant with the students. And the more you talk about it, the more exposure and knowledge they'll have throughout the rest of the school year. The second key point I have is if bullying is occurring in your classroom, always be proactive. You should involve yourself in the situation, even if it's tough, and get to know the facts of what's happening. Don't be a bystander because it will continue to happen unless something is said, especially by the teacher. Um, you should also address the issue with the parents and keep your administrators involved as well. My last key point is that children match behavior, so they need to be seeing positive interactions with each other. This also ties into being um, proactive so the issue can be stopped before it gets out of hand by modeling how they should interact with each other will help their overall um, behaviors with each other throughout the rest of the year. So for my lesson I would begin by reading Molly Lou Mellon. Um, this book is about a girl named Molly who's in the first grade and the book discusses many things that people might see as bad like her buck teeth and a bullfrog voice but her grandma always tells her to accept it and embrace it. She moves to a new town and has to go to a new school and a kid in her class starts to pick on her and she shows them that she loves herself and has confidence in who she is because she chose to like all the things the bully didn't. I would then open the discussion to my classroom about how they think Molly Lou Mellon felt when the bully first decided to pick on her at her new school and if they would have stepped in and said something or why he would be picking on her in the first place, making a point to say it's never okay to make fun of someone for what they look like or what they like to do. Um, we're all unique people and that's what makes us so um, individualized and different. I then would have led this discussion to how bullying can be prevented if we see it happening and step in, stand up for our classmates and tell the teacher. I'd point out a specific page in the book where the bully calls Molly a shrimp and point out how there's a group of kids on the sideline just watching. I would ask about um, if they would have said anything to the bully or if they think that he would have continued to bully Molly had they stepped in, and then I would ask them to go to their desks. I would have them take out a piece of paper and write a detailed reflection on why it's important to stand up. When you see bullying or involve an adult, after a few minutes, I would ask to see what they wrote and if they would share with the class. Then I would give them a cutout photo of themselves and have them write one thing they would like about themselves and then have them stand up and walk around and write one nice thing they like about someone else on their paper and at the end they'd have a collage of nice comments and hopefully walk away from this activity feeling better about themselves. This is a quick example of the cutout I would give to them and then I would take pictures of their faces and probably put them on their heads so it made it more personalized. And to wrap this up, I would ask how each student was feeling about the lesson and if they'd like to add anything to what I said or general comments or concerns. Um, I think the book I chose is a great representation of having self-confidence and not letting people make you feel bad about the qualities that you love about yourself. We are all unique and this book really does a nice job of reflecting that. You can carry yourself for very far if you have confidence. I think it's important for teachers to keep in mind during this lesson that it can be a very sensitive subject for some of the kids to discuss and you need to make sure the kids feel comfortable discussing the topic at all. Um, I'd also try to keep it lighthearted, keep it fun, although it's a really serious conversation. The kids need to have some enjoyment with it and that's why I included a positive activity to help them reflect positively. So the article that I chose discussed the effects bullying can have on an entire family.
So I asked three questions and the question I got the most answers to was me asking if any of you have been bullied. Um, Six out of seven responses to my bullying question were that you guys have been bullied at some point in your life, which I thought was very um, interesting. And I kind of wanted to see it visually and have everyone else see um, how prevalent bullying still is. My second takeaway from your responses was that you all think that it is very important to be aware of bullying in your classroom as future teachers, and I think that comes from your experiences with bullying as a kid. And lastly, you all mentioned cyberbullying at some point, um, talking about how um, it was most prevalent when you were being bullied, um, that cyberbullying was a very big thing, even when you were all kids, and it still is to this day. So The Invisible Boy is about a little boy named Brian, who is a bit of an outcast in his classroom. He feels invisible by everyone, even his teacher, and it takes a new student coming to his class to make Brian finally feel scared. So before we read, I will do a stand-up sit-down activity where students stand up when they connect to a statement. Some example statements would be like stand up if you've ever felt lonely or stand up if you've ever felt left out. Um, I would then read the book and have my students think about how Brian feels throughout the story. At the end, I will have them turn and talk to their neighbor and discuss some feelings that Brian might be feeling and why he feels that way. I think it's important throughout the discussion to reiterate that the things happening to Brian aren't nice and no one should treat their classmates like that. So after the discussion, I will hand them the worksheet with sentence stems like I can help by and I can make them feel important by. And after everyone is done, I will ask if anyone wants to share what they wrote. I think this is a great activity to use with this story because it helps them um, connect the story to the real world and to their own class. So what I like most about this story is that the is the friendship that um, you watch blossom between Brian and the new student Justin. Um, Justin helps their classmates see that Brian is a really good, talented uh, student, and it shows the influence one person can. Have. A couple tips I would give to anyone teaching this lesson is one. Keep reiterating that what is happening to Brian is bullying and that we should always be a Justin and stop it and be the bigger person. Another tip would be to not be afraid of the deep conversations that a book like this can have. Um, I think it is okay to spark those deep conversations with questions like how do we identify if someone is invisible or how can small actions make someone feel um, wanted and a part of the community? My article is called, How Does Bullying Affect Students' Academic Performance? by Kate Barrington. This article focuses on the common academic performance obstacles that a student who has been bullied may encounter. Students are less likely to be present at school, but also the students that are present are less likely to speak out in class or in a lesson for fear of being bullied by their peers. This often leads them to be labeled as a low achiever. Um, bullying can also lead a student to act out behaviorally as well. You guys actually had a lot of great takeaways from this article, um, one of them being that as a teacher, you should be extremely clear on the expectations and consequences of bullying in the classroom. And this conversation should happen early on in the year. The second takeaway is that bullying creates obstacles for teachers when it comes to getting their students to speak up. Oftentimes, students will not want to speak up for fear of getting bullied by their peers. So don't look at a student who's not raising their hand and automatically assume they don't know the answer. Look for different ways to assess their knowledge. Building trusting relationships with your students is incredibly important. 
It helps the student feel as if they can come and speak with you if they're having difficulties. And it also can help you as a teacher see if something in the student has changed or if the student isn't acting like themselves. This could be a sign of bullying. My last takeaway is that teaching about bullies and victims are important, but teaching about being a good bystander is just as important. Students can help each other by being good bystanders and could reduce bullying in the classroom. For today's lesson, I've chosen the book Marlene Marlene, Queen of Mean by Jane Lynch with Laura Embry and A.E. Mike Sell. This is the story about Marlene, a classroom bully who likes to spend her time pinch kicking and being pretty cruel to all of her classmates. See, Marlene wants power, and she thinks that the only way to get that is to be cruel and miserable to everyone around her. It doesn't matter if it's in the lunchroom or on the playground. She is... This goes on until one day, um, Freddy decides that he's had enough, and he stands up to Marlene. Then he talks to all the other students in the class and tells them about taking their own power. After Freddy bravely stood up to Marlene, she began to be a little bit nicer. Now, she wasn't nice all the time. She had her moments where she slipped, but she kept trying. Marlene points out that sometimes it can be hard to change, but it's definitely not impossible. And while she may slip up every once in a while, she keeps trying and trying to get
Hi y'all, my article was about how to stop bullying in schools, and the key points from the discussion that I took away are Teachers must address issues immediately and address rules and guidelines in the beginning of the year. Also, they need to set up a classroom culture where students feel safe and where they don't feel like bullying is an option. It is important for teachers to always be watching even when the students are not in the classroom. We need to educate students on the effects of what bullying does to others. The book I chose for my presentation is Zach Stands Up by William Mulcahy, illustrated by Darren McKee. This is my How to Stop Bullying lesson. Uh, the book is Zach Stands Up. I am going to teach this to second graders or around that age. Um, first, I'm going to start off by the introduction and background knowledge. Uh, I'll read the book to them and then have discussions throughout, have a discussion at the end and wrap it up, and go over worksheet and hang it up in the classroom and implement it. This book is about a second grade boy who sees some of his friends getting bullied by others in the classroom and he doesn't know how to stop it so he talks to his brother that night and figures out a way, a five star way of how to show people how to stop bullying and how to combat it and stand up for others that may be getting bullied. After him and his brother talk, they come up with the five-star plan, and he sees someone being bullied the next day, and he helps them and shows them the star, and everybody loves it, so they go show the teacher, and the teacher wants to implement it into the classroom as well. In the introduction, you can ask students questions about prior knowledge to bullying and what they've had done to them, or if they feel like sharing it and you can just have a discussion of before knowledge before you read the book. While reading the book to second graders, you can stop on certain pages and sticky note them and have a discussion and ask them, how do you think you should do this? Or what do you think happens next? And just do those leading discussion questions that might make higher thinking. At the end of the book, you can have a discussion with the kids and act out scenarios that might happen in your classroom. You can also tell them about the star and see what they think about it and have some long-ended discussions that will lead to higher level of thinking for all of the kids. You can pass out the five-star bullying worksheet and you can hand it to all of them, and then you can also laminate some and hang them around the classroom for people to see so they know what to do in situations. Once this is implemented in the classroom, there is a link on the back of the book that tells you like some websites to go to for activities and things to discuss with your classrooms. Just activities to figure out how to teach bullying and how to prevent it in a classroom. So we came up with 10 ways to combat bullying, and the first way is to mo model positive classroom interactions, and this really is important because, um, like mentioned previously, children match behavior that they see, so we really need to be having those positive interactions for them to continue matching in their life. Um, the second way is if it is happening in your classroom, you need to talk to your parents and administrators. This is really important because you need as much support and help as you can get as much as the children do too. It's really important to start teaching about bullying early in order to educate your students. Also know the resources within your school because I'm sure your school has plenty of them. Number five, point out bullying behaviors in novels even if your lesson isn't centered on bullying. This reinforces the idea that bullying is never okay. Pay attention to students in social settings. This could give you hints as a teacher if bullying is happening in your classroom. Teach about what an effective bystander looks like. Give your students the tools to help stop bullying on their own. Number eight, teach bystanders how to stand up for someone. Number nine, set guidelines and rules for the classroom and stick to them as close as possible. Number 10, always look out for one another and pay attention to when kids aren't even in the classroom. They can be in the hallway or at lunch and you don't see them normally.